Okay, so uh, today I am attempting to show you a second time how to deport and reuse a Colourpop palette. Let's try to keep the video at the 10 minutes this time because my cat is in the room and she... Oh, oh, she, she is not happy. Okay, so uh, the specimen that we have here today is the Colourpop Femme Rosa. Oh no, the She palette, not Femme Rosa. The She palette by Colourpop. And uh, it still looks nice, but here you go. Oh, oh, magnetic closure. Here, as you can see, I have departed and uh, cut out the foam board on top of this and uh, give myself so much more space. Um, just a heads up, uh, this is not a step-by-step uh, -step tutorial or anything because uh, one, I don't think it's that necessary because it's so easy. And two, this is the only Colourpop palette that I have. It didn't work for me. I don't plan to purchase another um, Colourpop press eyeshadow palette ever. It's not. Um, it's not like the. It's not the worst thing in the world. It just. It just doesn't work for me. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, get a few tools and get things in order, and we will get started. Here are all the tools that you are going to need. Uh, first is a piece of magnet. Um, the second is a mechanical pencil. The third is a knife. You can use a box cutter. What I use here is a knife that is used in surgery, but I can find it in craft store here. So that's what I use. But you can use box cutter or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And finally, it's just a plastic ruler. Um, and of course, you will need your Colourpop palette. I have uh, pulled all the eyeshadows out and I have shoved the, oh, the foam board back in. But don't worry, I said I was going to show you how to depot this and I will do that. Almost forgot, you're probably going to need a piece of napkin. This is toilet paper. Um, just use toilet paper, it's okay. Who cares? Um, okay, so first, how to deport the eyeshadow palette. So, as many people know, the Colourpop uh, palettes are magnetic. So, uh, I have seen in other uh, videos showing people how to deport Colourpop palette. Uh, they will use a hairpin or maybe a uh, cosmetic spatula, what have them. Um, I don't like to use though because uh, not with these butterfingers I won't. Uh, I'm clumsy and I'm afraid I might stab the eyeshadow with those. So that is where the piece of magnet comes in. Um, as you can see, I'm just going to show you by popping one of these in. Uh, so since they are magnetic, you just pop them in the holes, punch in the foam board here, and there they sit. Now I'm going to grab the piece of uh, toilet paper and I'm going to put it over the eyeshadows like this and I'm gonna hover the magnet on top and then I just lift it up there it goes there as you can see the eyeshadow is lift up, lifted up by the magnet behind the piece of the toilet paper I find that this method is uh, way safer because um, first no pointy tools are involved and second if you are not that dexterous with your fingers, you don't gotta worry about that. Um, since these are magnetic anyway, so you just use a magnet. It's that simple. Um, so you do the same for the remaining 11, 11 eyeshadow and this is what you are gonna end up with. Now to prepare for the cutting. As you have, might have guessed, from the mechanical pencil and the ruler, there might be some measuring involved. Um, now, to be completely honest, when I first did this, I didn't measure or mark down anything at all. I just put the ruler down and then I get the knife and then I uh, cut along the edges. But uh, it turned out okay. Um, as you can see from uh, the shot, in the intro that from uh, these four slots here once the entire foam board is cut out I could fit in five Colourpop eyeshadow in one row 
but if you need uh, the exact measurement that I got from the uh, finished palette, I will put it uh, on the screen and in the description box for you. And so I didn't do any measuring, but one thing that I did do is that um, I found the magnets that are um, put in the palette to achieve the magnetic closure. And I want to keep that, so uh, um, I take the piece of magnet from the beginning again and then I just move it along this edge here because I, I don't want to cut away or cut into the magnet that is embedded in the foam board. So I just take the little piece of magnet and I move it along and there you go. Oh, there. Uh, where it uh, snap is where where the piece of magnet snapped together with the magnet underneath, I took my mechanical pencil and then I marked down where I marked down the top here to, so I know how far do I have to go back from the edge so that I don't cut into the magnet underneath. You do the same thing to find the other magnet. There it is. Then you uh, put another dot here and then you just connect those two dots and you have the first line that you're going to cut along into the foam board. Once you have drawn all of your lines uh, along which you're going to cut by the measurement that hopefully Future Me will provide as promits, uh, we will get to cutting. Okay, so uh, first thing first, I want you to take the knife and then uh, don't cut yet. Hold up the palette and um, hold the knife at the angle that you are comfortable with, with your wrist and all. And then you put the blade next to the foam board here on the outside. Now, I want you to pay attention to uh, how far the foam board come up on the blade so that when you get to actually cutting, you don't want to push the blade um, deeper than what you are seeing here or else you are going to cut into the magnetic backing underneath. So uh, that's something to uh, pay attention to. Another extra step that I took when I cut out the foam board is that I uh, cut by uh, using this ruler as a guide. I put it on the top of the line that I drawn earlier and I push the blade down and then I both lean it against the ruler as I cut down and that is how I achieve the really really straight neat line that you could see in the intro. Now when you cut don't worry that you uh, uh, that you are gonna be, not going to be able to completely uh, made a perfect cut that severed the foam board uh, from the edges here. Uh, don't worry, um, once you have done cutting all the lines along the edges, you are going to lift up the foam board. And if there is any piece of uh, foam that is not completely cut through, you just take the knife and gently push it down and uh, sever them. Uh, and when you uh, do uh, when you are pulling the foam board out, um, you might want to stick your finger along the edges and push them down in case uh, when the uh, foam is not uh, completely cut off, it might lift up the edges. Now the edges are glued down very firm along the edges, so that's not a risk, but I did see the edges lift a little bit, so I do want to give you that tip as well. If you do need to make any additional cuts into the foam board that we are gonna discard anyway to pull it out of, of the palette, feel free to do so. As you can see, I have made a few myself here as well. And uh, once we have uh, made all of our cuts, we just uh, lift out the foam board. And there we have it, a uh, magnetic palette. The final step is just uh, cleaning off the glue that is still stuck to the surface of the magnetic backing here 
and I have another confession to make. Uh, I couldn't find a way to uh, completely wipe off all the glue uh, on top of it. I try uh, rubbing alcohol, I try Vaseline, I try hand sanitizer, and it still leaves a little bit of glue left here. As you can see, it's not sticky to the um, sticky so that the uh, pen stick to it, but it is sticky enough to catch. Uh, the little bit of eyeshadow that occasionally stray out of the pen and yeah it looks a little bit dirty but um, since the pens don't stick to the glue um, it's good enough for me if anybody has a better way of cleaning the glue of the magnetic backing feel free to drop it in the comment I, I would really welcome that all that, le all that is left to do now is just pop the eyeshadow back into the palette and uh, as you can see, this, this this is all the 12 shadows and you still have so much space here. You can put at least three more eyeshadows and uh, maybe squeeze uh, two more little Colourpop eyeshadows here. But I don't have any more Colourpop eyeshadow. Um, so I just stick these two random eyeshadows that I really like here into the palette. And uh, here I'm going to close it so that you can see. There, the palette still closes perfectly. The magnetic closure was not affected in the uh, modification of the palette at all. That's it, and we're all done. Um, I hope that I have provided all the necessary uh, instruction and tips that you are gonna need to uh, depart your and uh, reuse your own ColourPop eyeshadow and. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything left to say. Um, happy departing! If you have been wondering throughout the video about this uh, little palette that I have sitting here, it's just a DIY magnetic palette that I made that hopefully I will show you how in a future video. I modeled it after the Inglot uh, Freedom System. Uh, those um, those palettes in the Freedom System that they have, uh, I can't afford it, so I try to uh, make my own. These, these shadows are from the uh, O'Callan palette that is a dupe for the uh, Lime Crime uh, Venus palette. I don't remember if, if it was the first Venus or the second Venus. Uh, I departed it and uh, here it is. I just want to show up at this point. We're done. So I'm just showing up. Here's the O'Callan palette inside just some uh, Milani blushes that I have also departed and put in there. 